Has it started? Hello, everyone. We are here back on our second week of hands-on science activities. And today we're going to do an activity about learning about soil erosion. So if you've been following our posts and you've been seeing the activities that you have to have prepared, uh, the materials that you need, you might be ready to follow along. Um, this one takes a little bit more prep on the front end. So if you don't have all your materials ready, you can just watch the video now or save it and come back later when you have everything ready. Um, but I'll just demonstrate now and then you can see how to do it. So what I have prepared ahead of time are three two liter bottles and you can just pull these out of your recycling bin. You can next time you go into the store, buy a couple of things that come in two liters and uh, empty them out. Maybe you want to drink this stuff. Pop. Oh yeah, one of them had one of them had pop. Um, empty them out, and then you're gonna want to cut a hole in the top of the bottles. And I'll bring this up so you can see a little bit closer. Cut a hole in the top, and I measured it. It's about uh, six and a half inches long and around four inches wide this way. It's not so important that you have the exact right dimensions, but just cut a hole in the top so you have a rectangular hole. And uh, you don't want to go too far down because you're going to need to be able to put some soil in here. So you're going to take your two liters, you cut those holes in them, and then I, you know, this part's not essential, but it makes the experiment easier. I have attached them to some boards here, like you can see, so that they stay in place. Because what you need is enough uh, soil in here, and then you need to have some space below where you can put um, We'll show you some jars or something to catch water that's going to come out the front side. So you want them to be attached to something. You don't want them rolling around and then you want them to be elevated. So I have them on this little basket that we have at home. All right. So once you've got your uh, bottles ready and you've got your them stuck to a board, the next thing you're going to want to do is get some soil to fill in your uh, bottles. And so I have one already filled so you can kind of see what it looks like. You're going to take that soil and you fill it to right about the top level of your uh, where your cut is on the bottle. And you're going to want to do that in all three bottles. And what you can see on this one is it's important that you don't totally cover up the lid of the bottle. So you take your soil, you fill it up to about here on all three bottles. But so we're going to do that. This one is a little bit wet because we tested it earlier, but you'll see. Okay, thank you, Lydia. So I have this bucket here full of soil. Um, you can use whatever you have. If you have a bag of potting soil, you can go ahead and use that. Um, I have some potting soil, but I didn't want to use it because I have to repot some house plants later. So I'm saving it. This is just a, a bucket of soil from outside at my house. And I kind of mixed, what did I mix, May? Do you remember? Um, sand with dark. Dark. Yeah, I had some really dark soil and then I mixed a little bit of sand in with it just to have a little bit um, lighter texture of the soil. So I am taking it from my bucket, filling in um, to my um, okay. bottle here. Now the first bucket, the first container, you're going to want to just leave bare, just soil in it. The second container, I'm going to put in some plants. Now, if you were maybe going to do some gardening and you have some plants at home, like some little flowers or um, even vegetables, you could stick those in here. I actually don't have anything like that around the house right now. So I just went outside and found some plants in the woods. You could dig up a hunk of grass, a sod from your lawn and put it in there. Um, who cares about your lawn anyway right now, right? It's not a big deal. Um, I pulled these plants out of the woods here. We don't have, really have a lot of grass because I live in the woods. So um, I pulled these little sedges, which are a native plant that you find in the type of woodlands that I live in, which is an oak hickory woodland. So I'm going to take these and plant them in my container. So when you're putting your soil in, you want to make sure you leave enough space to be able to kind of plant your stuff in. So I'm taking these, planting them in here, and plant them as close together as you can. You want it to be nice and thick. You want to have a lot of root system as much as possible in there. Like a mini forest. Like a mini forest, yep. Whoa. It's getting a little heavy over here. Okay. 
So I'm gonna get all my plants in here. And then I have, you know, a little bit of extra space. So I'm gonna take this soil and kind of shovel it in there. Again, I don't wanna cover up this hole, okay? Because I need water to be able to flow out. Just a second, Lynn. So kind of plant your plants in there. You wanna get them in nice and tight. You don't want them to just be sitting there. You want them to actually be planted in the container. So press all around them to really make sure they're on there good. Okay. Okay. So now I've got my plants in there. In that one. Yep, we're gonna chew the water. Don't worry about that. Like my plant is trying to fall apart. Okay. And then the last one, could you come over here, Evie, and help me? It's a little off kilter because it's um I'm gonna move. Could you move that basket for me a second? We're gonna set this on the countertop while we fill them because it's a little bit easier. They won't fall, they kind of want to fall over. So then we're gonna fill our last container. Yeah, you can move that up so it's not in the way. So you have one container with just soil. You have one container that you should have planted your plants in. And then you have another container that you're gonna put your soil in. And you do kind of wanna press your soil down. You don't want it to be totally just fluffy sitting up there. You want it to be, you don't have to be super tight, but put it down to the level that it feels like soil would be on the ground. So kind of pat it down a little bit once it's in there. Um, you know, if you're doing this inside, it's gonna make a mess. You're gonna have uh, dirt on your countertop, on your floor, whatever. It's totally fine. Science, guys. You will have water on your countertop probably too, yeah. Okay, so here I'm putting some soil in. And then your last one, you're gonna wanna put something, not just dirt, but something on top. You could use, um, we, I have mulch here, so you guys can put the mulch on. You could also put uh, little like rocks, if you have little pebbles or something. Um, any kind of ground cover that's not a plant, but that's more like mulch or, so, mulch or wood chips, whatever you kind of have around. So kind of lay that in. You could even do like leaf litter if that's what all you had at home. Okay, that's enough, guys. All right, and then kind of press that up. All right, so then we can take these buckets and put them off to the side. My dirt, put it off to the side. All right, May, can you help me out by, I'm gonna lift this up and can you slide the basket back underneath? So then you're gonna wanna very gently, this one has a little bit of water in it because we tested it, so just ignore that for now. Okay. Lift it up, put the basket back where it was, my friends. Thank you, my good helpers here. So then it should look something like this. Got your three containers. Could you flip the basket around? I was wondering why the basket seemed like it was slanted. It's because it's a little slanted. So then you're gonna need some kind of jar or container. So I am gonna use ball jars because I have a lot of them and it's easy and they're just the right height. And you will put them right underneath your uh, spouts here. What would you call this? The opening, the lid, the <laughs> top, whatever of your, um, of your box. So I'm gonna put them, so I also like the ball jars because you can measure how much water comes out. Pull this back a little bit so you can see the jars better. Make sure that your um, jars are right underneath. And now we can actually begin our experiment. So our experiment, what I have are uh, four little containers of water that we're gonna pour into each bottle. And the water's gonna go through and we're gonna see what happens and what the water looks like when it comes out the front of the bottle. So I take a second and think about, talk, if you're watching and you've got kids with you, ask your kids who are with you what they think is gonna happen. So what do you think the water that comes out of this first bottle that just yeah. has the dirt, yeah. what do you think so that water's like, gonna look like? A bunch of water coming out. A lot of water's gonna come out. It's what do you think, Lydia? Um, it's, well, actually, like, a long time ago, we were told to actually plants. Oh, a long time ago, they're probably, so she said a long time ago, we turned into plants. So this is very dark soil that probably has a lot of organic matter in it. And so a long time ago had plants in it. That's probably true. One of you said you think that it's gonna be really muddy coming out, okay? 
What do you think the water will look like coming out of this one with plants? I think it's not going to be a lot. It's going to be a little less dirty because plants' roots will soak a lot of the water. She thinks plants' roots are going to soak a lot of the water up, so it won't be as much water. It won't be as dirt. dirty. Okay, this one, I think not as much is going to come out either because wood chips are blocked. All right, May thinks the wood chips are going to block it, not as much is going to come out. Okay. So hopefully you had a chance to make some predictions about what you think is going to happen. And then now we're going to actually observe. So it's time to make your observations, get your observation I minds know. going. And I guess there's three of you. You can each try one. So can I try um, the middle one? Sure. Evelyn, why don't you pour water and start pouring water? What I would recommend is pour the water in at the back so that you can watch it kind of flow towards the front and watch the jars here and see what happens. Don't totally overflow it, so yeah. Okay. What are you noticing about the water that comes out the front of this? You can pull it in there. It's coming out. It's coming out? It's muddy. All right, keep them right, pour some more. So the water that's coming out the front of this one, this is our bottle that only has dirt in it. It doesn't have anything covering it. It's very, very dirty. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna fill it. She's gonna fill it. She's gonna use all the water. The other interesting thing that you can do is measure how much water comes out. Stop. Um, no, it's gonna be fine. Everybody's worried about it, but this was a four cup container and this ball jar holds four cups, so it should be fine. All right, May, you're next. Take your bot, your jar of water, your, what is it? Measuring cup here and start pouring on this end and let's watch what happens. Now, just because there's plants here doesn't mean that no dirty water is going to come out. She's poured almost her whole container and we haven't seen a ton come out yet. I know. So we're seeing, yes, it's a little bit dirty. Is it cleaner or less clean than the other one? A little less clean. Is it, sorry, is it cleaner or dirtier than our other one? Cleaner. Okay, it's what cleaner. else do you notice about how much water came out? This one oh, it doesn't have as much because the, of way the less. Okay, Lydia, do you want to pour one? Do you want to be a water pourer? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have one more water pour. So this was the one with just soil. This was the one with plants. And then this one has wood chips or mulch on top. So Lydia, oh, are you tall enough? Do we have a step stool in here? No. Here, hold on. I'll put this down. I'm going to hold you up. And hold it. We got a short. Oh, we got a step stool. Daddy's home today, so he can help us get a step stool. Cameo appearance. Okay, go ahead and pour right here. Pour your water. Let's see what what's happens. Happening? Here. What's happening? She can't see. Could you guys tell her what's happening? Some water's coming out, and it's cleaner. It's the cleanest. I'm gonna put a little bit. It's also wood. Yeah, we're gonna pour it all the way out. It's getting actually pretty dirty. Started. But like, if you can see it like this, it's pretty clean. All right. So, what do you guys notice after all of this comes out? What are some observations you have to make about um, what happened here? This one has the most. This one has the least. And this one has the most. Okay. What about the color of the water? How clean it is? This one's the dirtiest. This one's the middle dirtiest. This one's the cleanest. Okay. Why do you guys think that that is the case? What is it that's different between these two bot these three bottles that made the water come out differently? Um, the the more like stuff it is, the cleaner it is. Okay, so there's like more these stuff. Ones have you? Cleaner ones than this one because there's stuff on top, so not only the dirt gets out. Yeah, there was nothing here to stop the flow of the water. So as water came down. It just washed everything away with it. And the other thing that it was hard for you to see on the video, but we had tested this out before with just this one bottle before we did the experiment on line here. And so this soil was very wet. It was saturated. And when the soil is saturated, it's much easier for those soil particles to get picked up and washed out. These two, the soil was a little bit drier because I had just put it in. But we also had these materials on top that when we poured the soil on, they kept that soil from just getting washed right out. Now, what's the difference? Why do you think there's a big difference between plants and just mulch? Because both of them cover the soil, right? Because 
the plants soak up the water and use it. And this doesn't soak it up, it just like stops it. Yeah, what do the plants have that soaks up the water? Roots. Yeah, the plants have roots. And so the roots of this plant actually not just soak up water and hold on to it, they also help hold that soil in place. And that is why there's so little water that came out of the middle here and why that water is so much cleaner compared to these other three. Now, is there still dirt in that water? Yeah. yeah, there is. And especially, you notice, I couldn't get plants right to the front here. And so there is a little spot of just dirt. I'm curious if I had cut this all the way off and put plants all the way to the front, if maybe that would have looked a little bit different. I don't know. What do maybe you think? Maybe it would be even less. Maybe there would be even less. Maybe it would be cleaner. Yeah. So I'm going to slide this whole thing forward just a little bit because I want you guys to see what the top of the soil looks like in this one container that has just soil. We're gonna be very careful. I'm a little concerned that I'm gonna dump water on the computer, but hopefully I won't. Oh, water. All right, so it's no problem. Don't worry about it. Uh, so one thing you can kind of see, I'm gonna tilt the screen down a little bit so that you can look at it. Yeah, is if you look at this one here, you can see a couple of things. One, you can see there's like a little pool here where the water, where we poured, where we poured the water in. It scoured out a little pool and the water's just sitting there. You can also start to see the path that the water took on its way out here. And there's like a little river sort of carved out there. So if you're following along, you've done this at home, you can hang on to it. I would say hang on to this and let your kids play with it. Maybe set it up outside and let them play with it throughout the week and see if anything changes. So over time, Ooh, that's changing. it's changing, it's stripping onto my countertop and they're very excited about it. So over time, how do you notice differences in these water bottles? Maybe when the water, when the soil is saturated or not saturated with different kinds of plants, um, do the plants do a better job when it's really wet or not really wet? Hold on, we have a question, yes. Can I push it down more Okay, water yep. Can we not push more water out right now while we are on the camera? Yeah, I'll put these back out in case more water comes out. I'm going to put that one because the other thing is full. Yeah, so these, uh, what you're seeing in this experiment is you, the power of plants to soak up water that comes down and runs across the landscape. And that's why, one of the reasons why at Elgro, we are always talking about plants, native plants, planting things in the ground to help hold that soil in place. Because if you hold that soil in place, it's not washing into our lakes and rivers and streams, and it's not carrying pollution with it. Um, we have a fun activity that I recommend. If you just have a few things around your house, you can try to do this with your own kids. Um, our, my coworker Courtney came up with this and it's really cool. She found this picture of native plants online, native versus non-native species. Uh, now, Evelyn might know the answer to this. Evelyn, what is a native plant? A native plant is a plant that was here and it didn't move. Yeah, yes. A main bike lives. Yeah, here. it lives in this area and it's evolved and adapted to live in this area. Does anybody know what the difference is in roots between native and non native species? Well, we have this fun game. Can you pick that up? Sorry, I dropped it on the floor. That can help you do that. So if you look up on the internet, just Google native versus non-native species, look at plants, and you'll find a picture that looks something like this. There's lots of different pictures. And what we did is we cut off all the roots of the plants and we made it into a matching game. So all those roots are in this little baggie. And they you can, and they have Velcro on them. Test your kids, have them practice with matching the native plant root to its, I, knew that one thing. I don't know if that's right. I'm just guessing you guys. But what you'll notice, the big difference between them is the native species over on this side have very long root systems. And we've got lots of information about native plants on our website, elgro.org slash rainscaping. And then the non-native plants tend to have smaller root systems. So here's a question for you. Based on our experiment, what do you guys think? What if I had one bottle that had native plants with long, deep roots, and I had one bottle that had non-native plants with shallow roots? 
what would be the difference in how much water would be soaked out? We're going to do this after. What would be the difference if I had one bottle with native plants, long, deep roots, and one bottle with non-native plants, shorter roots? Do you think you would see a difference? Yeah, I think the long roots would suck up like almost all of the water, and the non-native roots would suck up a lot, but not as much as the other ones. I think that's a good prediction. So you could try that using different types of plants as you perform your experiment. So that's our experiment for today, and that helps explain partly why we think it's so important to plant plants and to plant native plants because they can help soak up runoff that can carry pollutants. And you learned last week in our watershed demo about how pollutants can be carried through runoff. Native plants help hold the soil in place, help soak up lots of that runoff water, and help keep our lakes, rivers, and streams clean and clear of pollution. So this is an activity that you can complete on your own with stuff around your house. You can uh, try different combinations of things on top. You could try pea gravel versus, uh, versus mulch. You could try different types of plants. Another really fun version of this that I've seen quite a few teachers do in their classroom is they'll take two liter bottles and they will uh, flip them upside down. They won't cut the hole in the top. They'll just cut the end of the bottle off and flip them upside down with the hole on the bottom and fill them with different types of soil. So what would be the difference if I had one full of just sand, one full of just clay, one full of kind of a loamy mixture of like dark and sand mixed, and then see the differences in infiltration and how water soaks into the different, uh, to the different soil type. So that's another experiment that you could do if you have even more two liter bottles lying around and you're not sure what to do with them. Thanks so much for following along. I hope you enjoyed this experience. We do have the link to how to perform this experiment linked in the comments or linked in the description of this video. It's also on our latest, one of our latest blog posts that has the, um, in all the things that we're doing online during the school closures. So you can go and you can find that instructions for that experiment there. I also have some examples of worksheets that you could have your kids do if you wanted them to make more structured observations about what they're seeing. So thanks for following along. I hope you learned something and we'll see you back on Friday where we're going to take some of the leftover soil we have and use it for an art project. And then we have some more fun activities coming next week. On Monday, you're going to get to see Kara, who I don't know if you've seen on Facebook Live in a while, uh, read to you a little story about Trelly, which is fun. And then we have some more science experiments and fun stuff coming next week. So hope you're doing well uh, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.